Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick. It has definitely been a long day. Uh, it's winding down. I'm surprised I'm still going at it, but I need to get some things done. It's been uh, a long week already, uh, but you know, say I'm still breathing. I'm still in the fight. Uh, that's the way it goes. So uh, I'm here. Um, before I get started, I want to remind you, we are still in the midst of a fundraiser booster, uh, a fundraiser boost push, whatever you want to call it. We're pushing, uh, the goal, uh, was to raise, uh, 10,000 by Sunday. Uh, for those of you wondering what goes on with that, uh, I have been for, uh, three decades working in the black community uh, conducting research, uh, disseminating research, publishing articles uh, into the thousands, lecturing, uh, doing, um, matter of fact, doing uh, workshops. I think I showed you guys uh, the workshop on epigenetics and adverse childhood experiences uh, and how that's impacting our kids. Uh, the Black Man Lead Rite of Passage Initiative, which is designed around uh, the uh, purpose and uh, responsibility to effectively racially socialize young black males, which reduces their proclivity to violence, reduces their chances of dropping out, which re reduces their chances of becoming incarcerated. A big part of this was actually about the devastation of incarcerated parents, uh, the devastation that has on youth and that it actually serves as an adverse childhood experience. It's counted as one ACE and the ACE score of four or higher leads to a uh, plethora of long-term health outcomes in the life of our children. So uh, as adults, so throughout their lives, so it's important to understand that. And I've been talking about epigenetics and trauma and so many other things forever. And that's all of that's a part of what we do. Uh, I've been doing it for years. I've been not only doing the research, but uh, taking what I learned in the research and developing programs and strategies and implementing programs and strategies, and we will continue to do that. Uh, we offer services from everything from helping uh, people with, with housing to helping young women with domestic violence and other issues. Uh, we are dealing with a major uh, crisis with teen suicide, especially young black girls. I've talked about all of that all the week. So there's a lot going on. So we do that. We definitely need your support. The way that you can see how to support what we do will be in the description box at the top. Uh, there are a number of different ways that you can give. There is also a way that you can give through DonorBox, which will allow you to not only give, but set up recurring donations as small as $10 a month, or to also follow the progress of the campaign to keep up with it. Um, but you can give in a number of different ways, even through Cash App. So that's that. So show some love, show some support, because it's something that's definitely needed. Uh, we will continue to do what we have always done, no matter what's going on. It's a love. It's a passion. It is definitely not for the faint at heart. Uh, with that being said, look, let me close the door. I'm saying close the door, but I don't know. Close the door on this whole uh, thing that's went down in Montgomery. Uh, it took on a whole new life. It's like uh, everywhere you look, there's memes. Uh, but the th I think the thing that I want to take out of this, and I don't want it to be, oh, here come Dr. Wallace just dumping on all the fun and all the thing. No, man. Uh, there's nothing to marginalize about unity and response. Um, there will be those who will attempt to sell it as divisive and hatred, but the reality of it is there is... Uh, distinct differences in how people treat people and it is directly associated with race we can talk about it till we blow in the face and try to repaint it re represent it and we're still going to come up with a racial caste system will some be able to navigate it better than others absolutely and you know that's what it is but uh, one thing i said 
probably close to 20 years ago when I was being interviewed and I was basically asked based on my success how could I feel that racism is an issue when I've been able to navigate and and be been able to do XYZ and all the stuff I'm not gonna talk about all the stuff I've done but to do that and my answer was then and is now as long as I remain the anomaly among my people meaning that I am an abstract idea I am not the norm the average black man isn't thinking that he can do XYZ and definitely not the black, average black male child or teenager or young man is thinking that then I have not yet achieved my responsibility to empower to enlighten to encourage and so there's this thing to do and so when we talk about things like this that's the thing I look at is yes I am excited because we responded we answered the call we stood up we said no not on our watch uh, you know and there are all these different things when you watch that video and I, I'm not one that watches uh, violent video. I stopped watching the police shootings. I stopped watching the black on black shootings. I stopped watching the the the, the domestic violence video. I, I I did because it was destroying my psyche. But I wanted to watch this because I had heard so many things about it. It has a comedic uh, uh, appeal to it, but it also shows a sense of entitlement. It shows a proclivity towards violence to black men. Uh, the guy who was initially assaulted was not threatening anyone. He was making his case, which he had a right to do. He was there. It was his job to do it. And he was doing his job. And he was being as patient. I, I tell you what, I would not have explained myself as many times as he explained himself over and over again. You know, move it or we're going to call in reinforcement. I'm not doing it. But he explained it. And obviously he was getting upset and frustrated. I can't, you know, I don't know all what was said. But what I do know is that as of right now, all those people that were handcuffed, from what I understand, nobody was arrested original, originally that day. At least that's what I'm getting out of what I've been able to find out. Nobody's arrested. But there are a total of four warrants out. And they're all for the people from the... Uh, uh, the white people from the uh, that that initiated the incident. Now I don't know what's going to happen. They're still watching footage, and they're looking to see what was going on. And um, I, it's interesting to see how this is going to play out. And that's the one thing that I do want to um, remind you of is that we've seen the front end. Let's pay attention to how the back end plays out because there are different ways of retaliating when we decide to stand up and what i want to initially put out is there's this idea of a docile black person or black people being naturally docile or black men being naturally docile while we have died there are very there are those who will sit up and go along to get along but there have been up risings throughout slavery there was revolts on ships there were revolts on plantations there were uprisings after the emancipation to say that we're docile is almost an attempt to plant a seed of docility and acquiescence and what I would prefer to do is sit up and say, it's time to stand up. It's time to become one. What I would want to do is what I did on the front of the front end of this uh, before it took on a mind of its own uh, and became basically 75 percent of what you see on social media. Uh, I said that I, I want to see this translate into unified uh, uh, working unified efforts to work together to build together to grow together to answer the issues and the in the enigmatic issues and the problems that we're facing within the community uh whooping some people's butt felt good uh it sent out a notice it was a symbol of what's possible 
but it doesn't answer all of the other issues unless we take that energy and we build on that energy and we don't let it die with the emotion that will subside because that's what they're waiting on. They're waiting on it. Stop being funny. They're waiting on it to stop producing an emotion of excitement. And they're waiting on us to go back to the status quo, which is what we always do. Even in the most intensive situations, they found a way to sh shit Ferguson down. It took a lot of efforts. It took a lot of investing. It took a lot of uh, actors. It took a lot of black people willing to be used. From Black Lives Matter, uh, uh, Sean, whatever his name is, King, uh, and a bunch of others who allow themselves to come in and be used to literally muffle the real true voice of what was going on in Ferguson. And what they couldn't muffle, they killed. Darren Seals and, and, and six other brothers were killed in, 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 in eerily similar ways. They, 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 they stifled it. And then we what? Went back to business as usual. We made a whole bunch of noise about Floyd. And we got justice, but people still, brothers still dying on the streets. We have problems, and I talked about this the other day, young black girls uh, between the ages of five and 13 are killing themselves at an alarming rate. And it has a lot to do with social media, specifically um, platforms like TikTok and Instagram. And we need to be able to combat that. There's a spike in suicides among young black males, 14 to 24. We need to find out specifically some of the things that are going on with that. I've done a lot of research. There's a lot of more research to be done, but we need to be in that. There's a major issue in the widening of the racial wealth gap, which is going to play a major role in socioeconomic fluidity and our ability to function and execute power in, in, in areas of influence that really truly matter. We need to be able to effectively educate our youth. That means to give them the values, interests, and principles on top of the identity that we implant in them and we protect. All of these things are things that we could take this energy with and say, this is who we are. We can operate together. We can instinctively move in sync with one another without saying a word. I mean, without sitting up and saying a word. Man, who would have known that throwing a hat would would literally create what happened? You know, it, 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 it's, you know, the chair memes are crazy, the hat memes are crazy, and I get it, it's, it's crazy. I mean, people are making money hand over fist selling shirts with chairs on them and, and caps on them and all that's like, I mean... It, it, it's crazy. My thing is, how can we effectively and efficaciously concentrate that energy into things that can lead to business ownership? The strengthening of black families, because we talked about this uh, several times last week. The disintegration of the black family is one of the ways that they've attacked us and kept us at bay. The lack of a balance of feminine and masculine energy in the home is disrupting the development of our children. I told you how that's happening. I've done, like I said, workshops on it. We talked, um, I got books still around from where we talked and, uh, on the su su subject. When, when I'm giving up myself, I'm giving up myself because I'm passionate about this thing. I want to see us take energy like this, you know, bask in the symbolic victory of it and the physical victory but also say what could this possibly be if we took it into the world of finance what could it possibly be if we took it in the world of academia what could it possibly be if we took it into the development of our communities and the building of businesses uh, what could it be if we used it to address the needs of our children uh, as far as identity? What could it would do if we could reduce recidivism rates and incarceration rates altogether? What could it mean if we could literally use this as a say, a, 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 as a launching pad for building something powerful? What if this is that moment? We thought it was Ferguson. I never saw anything like Ferguson before. 
and it was sustained for a long period of time and it was organized. That's what they did not want you to know is just how organized Ferguson was. It wasn't a black bunch of black people looking at this was organized. This was focused. It was political energy being built. And they sent in uh, bad actors to disrupt it. And here we are nine years later back at square one because we allowed it we have to take these victories further we should have took floyd uh further uh george floyd we should have took it further we should have took uh tamir further we should have took uh trayvon further we should still be going to war for brianna and sandra present brianna taylor and sandra bland and oscar grant and all these ones that came before them and have come after them we should be giving them a voice in action and not just in anger that that that's so important and we need to be looking at ways of holding uh organizations within our community and i mean even the black church accountable for what's going on in the, in the community. Anybody that is withdrawing from the community has to be investing in the community. It has to be established. It has to be a level of accountability. Uh, what I saw in Montgomery is exciting. There are those who are talking, who's gonna talk it down and and you know there are gonna be those who are so programmed that they're gonna talk about you know black people I mean the thing forget the fact and there are even those who will show the video of blacks and whites fighting and not show what started it to give it context now by now everybody should know but not everybody's on social media believe it or not and so everybody doesn't know but when people do see it or somebody says hey have you seen this like no nah, i'm not well check it out and they get a version of it that only shows one thing it sends a, and, it, and it, it, it it can easily reinforce negative false stereotypes which doesn't serve us well so we have a responsibility in sharing this that we share it with proper context hey white dude stepped out of line bunch of white dudes jump black dude blacks ride and it needs to be understood like that we didn't start it we finished it and that needs to be our mantra moving forward we we we're not here to start nothing but trust me we're here to finish whatever comes that has to be our goal it's it's to me it's not about uh spending my energy on hating anybody i have friends who i really truly respect as friends who don't look like me but they also understand that nothing trumps my love for me and my family um and they understand that i'm going to fight hard that i'm going to speak truth in order for our friendship to remain you 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 can't come in and think you can stifle me and for the most part they go along and they agree and those who don't, I don't care. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. In being honest, I'll tell you that the greatest resistance and the most assaults that I've had have come from my people. Not to say that I haven't had some issues. I've had some clients, white clients, who suggested that I tone down my rhetoric because um, I'm associated with their brand and they don't want their clientele and their target audience to see the association and then see me. Well, then you have a problem. If they have a problem with what I'm saying, then you have a problem with what I'm saying. Because if you could see the truth in what I'm saying, then you should be able to speak and defend it and stand up and see that's a problem here. Everybody's worried about protecting their brand. Everybody's worried about protecting their reputation. And their reputation is oftentimes tied up in lies. I don't give a damn about a reputation that of what other people think of me. I, I give a whole lot about my character presentation and my integrity. And sometimes that's going to piss people off. People aren't going to like me. He's rude or he, he, he's uh, a troublemaker. No. 
I'm going to speak truth to power. I'm not going to play nice. If, if there was nothing to call out, then I wouldn't have anything to do. If there weren't all these enigmatic issues, if there weren't these systemic machinations that have played on for more than a century after slavery, then I wouldn't have anything to talk about. If there was a level playing field, I wouldn't have anything to talk about. If there wasn't disparities in wealth that was built uh, unfairly, then I wouldn't have anything to talk about. But the fact that I have legitimate complaints says that I have a right to speak on them. And I'm not going to be quiet about it. But what I'm saying is we got to move beyond the talking. We've got to be actively engaged. We've got to put some foot on the ground. we got to come together and collaborate. What you saw in Montgomery was collaboration. That was active, instinctive collaboration for one particular cause, to protect and defend one of ours. And that has to be the mindset. If you touch one of ours, we are going to touch you. It's absolutely unequivocally necessary for that message to be out. I told you this, what, 20 years ago. I told you, I said, stop whining and crying about them coming into our community and killing our kids and start adding consequences. Everybody's trying to make moral arguments to immoral people. They're morally bereft. You can't make a moral argument to people who aren't driven by morality. They're driven, they're driven by power. They're driven by capitalism. They're driven by being at the top. And anything that threatens that, they attack. So then what must you do? The same thing you do in every other area of your life, you apply a consequence with your dog, with your kids. Anybody that you're trying to show what you will accept and won't accept, you apply a consequence to the negative actions. It may be something as simple as, I'm not going to deal with you anymore. It may be something like, I'm going to meet it with equal force. Whatever it is, has to be enough that they sit up and say, we're not going to do that. That's the message we have to send on that area. But we've also got to understand Winning that fight on that dock did nothing for socioeconomic stability of the black community, it did nothing for mass incarceration, it did nothing for gentrification, it did nothing for uh, the mental health crisis that's going on, the identity crisis that's going on, it did nothing for uh, the rise in suicide rates among young black girls and young black males. It does nothing for the consistent and continued disintegration of what's left of the black family. Those are things that we're going to have to grapple with within ourselves. And those are the things that we're going to have to work with and work on. So this is my challenge that we stand up and we do something about it. We take the excitement. We take what we see in this. We take the message from this and we learn and glean from it. But we apply it to the way we move going forward. It's time to unite. We cannot stand alone. We saw that if that brother out there alone, it doesn't end well. If that brother's out there and every other brother standing around looking like I've seen so many other times on trains when people are being killed or being hurt or maimed or raped or whatever and did that, he would have really been severely injured if not killed. But the rapid response and that, that first responder, that brother that ran from up on that deck and came down there and got in the middle of it. Initially, he's just trying to pull him off. Him, but then he's like, hey, wait a minute. Y'all. And, and so it gets right. But that first responder triggered. A chain reaction of time to ride. And so then that's what we have to do. But we have to ride more and then in the physical. We have to ride economically. We have to ride academically. We have to ride uh, in the business realm. We have to ride for our families. We need to hold things together. It's our responsibility to do that. And if we do that, man, uh, that's so much that can be done. So again, uh, I want to challenge everybody uh, to let this be a starting point, not uh, a one-stop thing. We ride it until it gets dry, and then we move on to the next thing. They're expecting that. They're expecting us to ride it until it dries out and move on. We can't let it dry out. We can't keep letting these moments pass. These are moments that we can build on. These are moments that we can grow through. These are moments that we can send messages that are long lasting. So again, I'm challenging everybody to do that. And again, before I get off, don't forget, if you believe in the work that we've been doing for years, if you believe in my research, if you believe in the dissemination of that research, if you believe in the work I do in the community, Black Man Lee, uh, the work with mental health, uh, wraparound services, and everything else, the uh, work on epigenics and things in the black community with the Harris County Sheriff's 
my office and anybody that wants me to come to your city and do it in your city, I'll do it. Uh, but what I'm saying is we have work to do it. I want you to support it. So again, look in the description box. There are several different ways to do it. Reach out. Let's make it happen. On that note, look, I'm going to get off of here, uh, take a break and uh, finish up strong. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your evening. I'm out of here.